Hi buddies, Marvin here from TechBureau.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy bureaus. And today we're taking a look at possibly the new budget king and queen when it comes to quad-core processors. We have both the new AMD Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X and you might want to stick around as the results are quite interesting, especially considering their price points. I think this would be the new best option when it comes to budget PC builds that is decent for gaming as well as light productivity work. And I know a lot of popular tech reviewers have already released their reviews, so I'll try to bring in new insights by comparing these two budget processors with my Ryzen 5 2600X in a relatively budget system as well for a more realistic use case scenario. With that being said, let's get into it. Alright guys, with a wide range of selection when it comes to budget processors, especially with AMD's own Ryzen 3 lineup, why would you pick the 3100 and the 3300X? Well, the reason being is not only that they have 4 cores like any other Ryzen 3 processors, but they now also feature SMT or simultaneous multi-threading with up to 8 processing threads. The 3100 has a base clock of 3.6GHz and a max boost clock of up to 3.9GHz, while the 3300X has a base clock of 3.8GHz and can boost up to 4.3GHz with both having a TDP of only 65W like the previous generation Ryzen 3 processors. And what's good about these new processors is the price. The 3100 is priced at 99 US dollars or around 5,000 pesos, while the 3300X is priced at 120 US dollars or 6,000 pesos. But of course, we still have to wait for the actual retail price here in the Philippines, but judging by these numbers, they should fit right in on any budget builds. Now, I know this is not an adequate comparison, but it's all I have right now, so we're going to compare both of these processors to the older Ryzen 5 2600X which has 6 cores and 12 threads and has a base clock of 3.6GHz and can boost up to 4.2GHz. This is currently priced at around 7 to 8,000 pesos depending on where you look at locally. Now, I just want to tackle this real quick guys. What's interesting about these new Ryzen 3 processors is the fact that the cheaper 3300X can match or even beat the significantly pricier Intel i7-7700K except well for integrated graphics since the 3300X has none. And yeah, granted it's an older processor, but if you're considering buying a second-hand i7-7700K, then you might feel a little bit uneasy considering the price to performance difference. With that said, AMD is actually putting both these processors against the more recent Intel i3-9100 and the i5-9400, which is not exactly the same in terms of core and thread counts, but there's that. If you want to learn more about those comparisons and results, I'll put a reference link on the description below. But for the purpose of this video, we will put both of these against each other and against the Ryzen 5 2600X. But before we head into our benchmarks, I just also want to point out another key difference between the 3100 and the 3300X which is their topology or the way they are designed because it is also quite important. The 3100 has a 2 plus 2 configuration which essentially means that there are two active cores per CCX or core complex in two different CCX modules which may cause some latency. While the 3300X features all four cores on a single CCX module, minimizing core-to-core -core latency which should provide a better multi-core performance. But of course, that's all in specs and theory, so let's proceed with our actual benchmarks. Now like I said, we're going to test both of these processors on a relatively budget system for a more realistic use case scenario. But to be honest, this is all I have. <laughs> but yeah, for the motherboard, I decided to use a B450 board which I assume most of you will use with these processors until the new B550 comes out. I am using the Arus B450 Pro Wi-Fi. For the graphics card, although I have an ASUS ROG 62070 Super, I decided to use a 1070 instead which is a more budget pairing for our budget quad-core processors right here. As for the memory, I'm using the XPG Spectrix D60G 16GB CL18 running at 3200MHz. The power supply is an adequate Seasonic 650W. All of the processors will be cooled by the 2600X stack cooler which is the Rage Spire. As for my benchmarking methodology, which is quite important for me to share with you guys so that you can have an idea of how I come up with my results, I'll just pop the details on the screen so that you can pause and check it out if you're interested. Alright guys, let's start with some productivity and synthetic benchmarks. Let's start with Blender. I tested all the processors on two Blender 2 tests, starting with a render image of a demo file called the Junk Shop, and then followed by using Blender's built-in BMW benchmark so that we can have an idea of their performance on both synthetic and actual rendering in Blender. Next, we have Geekbench, which is a cross-platform benchmark to test a processor's performance, and the results are quite interesting as both the 3100 and the 3300X were able to beat the 2600X in single-core performance. And this is actually not the only test, as later we will see a similar scenario. 
But in terms of multi-core performance, the 2600X is still the clear winner here. Now in Cinebench R15, which is another popular CPU benchmarking software, again both the 3100 and 3300X beat the 2600X in single core performance, and as expected with a 6 core and 12 threads, the 2600X pulled ahead in multi core performance. The same scenario is observed in Cinebench R20, which is really quite interesting. By the way, I made sure that all the processors are running on its optimum performance with both core performance boost and precision boost overdrive enabled, and I made sure that they are boosting up to their maximum specifications during this test. Next, we have Handbrake, which I did a transcoding of a 1GB 4K video file using the Fast 1080p preset. And as you can see on these trends, the performance of the 3100 and 3300X is not too far away from the 2600X when it comes to real-world performance. Now, I also tested all the processors on 7-Zip for both compressing and decompressing operations via the command line benchmark mode. And lastly, for our high CPU intensive benchmarks, we have video exporting in Adobe Premiere Pro. And as you can see, like I said, the performance of both the 3100 and 3300X is not too far off from the 2600X, which is really interesting and I am somehow not surprised by this given the fact that I think Adobe Premiere Pro is still not yet fully optimized for utilizing all processor cores. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that. But yeah, judging by our CPU intensive benchmarks, both the performance of the 3100 and 3300X speaks volume when you start considering their price points. Now let's move on to the gaming benchmarks, which is more of a combination of the performance of all the components combined, especially the combination of the processor and a 1070 graphics card. And as you can see, again, the performance of both the 3100 and 3300X is not too far off from the 2600X. And even on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is a CPU bound game, they perform close to each other. The same goes for other games such as GTA V and Rainbow Six, the results are pretty much neck in neck. Now some games such as Apex Legends and Call of Duty Modern Warfare produce a quite confusing result with the 3100 edging both the 3300X and 2600X but just a little bit and in reality, you might not even notice that while gaming. And interestingly enough, some games like The Shadow of the Tomb Raider yielded pretty much the same results regardless of which processor was used. All in all, in terms of gaming, it is safe to say that both the 3100 and 3300X when partnered with a decent graphics card will perform quite decently in almost all eSport titles and with proper tweaking on the settings on AAA titles as well. Now in terms of thermals, with a higher boost clock, the 3300X is significantly hotter during load but is relatively cool on average. As for power consumption, as expected, both the 3100 and 3300X with newer architecture is super power efficient. And if you think about what they are capable of relative to the 2600X, power consumption wise, they are the clear winner right here. Overall, the performance of the 3100 and 3300X is really impressive especially for how they are priced right now. And the performance to value of these two, especially the 3300X is really good and will be an easy recommendation for anyone who is planning to build a budget gaming PC that can also do light productivity tasks such as casual photo and video editing. But to be fair, if you have the patience, you can probably wait for Intel's 10th Gen i3 processors. But for now, the AMD Ryzen 3 3300X is my recommendation and is ideal for those who are upgrading from older Ryzen 3 and Intel i3 processors. And I guess this is also the perfect opportunity to jump over to Ryzen to build the best bang for the buck budget PC build. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Full disclaimer, this is my first processor review. So if you have any constructive criticism, just leave a comment below, but please take it easy. <laughs> Huge thanks to AMD for this opportunity to review a recently released product and I certainly had fun making this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day guys. You're awesome.